Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and today I really just wanted to do an epic drawing slash inking and just share it with you guys. I'd been wanting to do a bit of a detailed Art Nouveau style drawing for a while, actually probably since the last one I did back in October. Or was that even September actually? So off camera I sketched this all out and I've explained before but it's really hard to draw something accurately on a very flat table under a camera, I don't do it very often and if I do do it, it kind of makes the image go a little bit skewed and a little bit off so I drew this and leaned on a surface while I did it so it wouldn't look odd and with it being a tilted head figure as well I definitely didn't want to make that look more weird than it could have done. However you do get to see me draw it with ink and uh, I wish the process of doing the ink was as quick as sketching it out. Anyway my lovelies I digress. The beautiful paper I'm working on at the moment is the Sea White of Brighton A4 heavyweight cartridge paper and that comes at 220 GSM. Now I'm, I'm more of a watercolour paper kind of person and I do prefer the Botanics paper. However, I was going to use acrylic inks on here so I thought well let's see if this paper holds up. And of course, because I wasn't going to be working in tons and tons of layers, I thought, let's see if it can just take a good wash. And you'll have to see if it does or not. <laughs> I'm outlining this with a variety of markers, which I found in an old abandoned pencil case from not so long ago. And also a few pens that I've received recently in various subscription boxes. They kind of all swirl together and end up in this one pencil case. I used the Faber-Castell Echo Pen, which I think it might have re I've received it in the Upcrate. Yeah, it was Upcrate. And several Unipin liners, ranging from size 0.05 all the way up to a whopping 8. Or is it 0.8? It varies from pen to pen, don't you think? I thought using a variety of nib sizes would help have a nice variety of thickness of lines obviously. However that is very much how Art Nouveau styles tend to look. You sort of have the thicker outlines on the outer edge of the character or the main features and then all those divine swirls and details on the inside of the character done with a finer pen. I must admit I was quite tempted to just leave this as it is in black and white and part of me kind of wishes I'd scanned it but I was quite eager to get in there with the ink. Now I know I'm using this a lot just lately but it is the acrylic ink I had in the Artful box and th there'll, there'll be an end card linking to that video if you're new here and you're wondering what on earth I'm on about. But primarily, this is why I chose to use heavyweight cartridge. Again, if I was going to use inks, which I do, the acrylic stuff, you don't need a lot of layers and it kind of, it dries in an interesting way. I've noticed with neat applications, which is what I'm doing for the sky background, if it's not been diluted very much or if at all, it kind of leaves it kind of seals the paper actually and you can actually layer it up and, it, and it's not going to chew the paper up underneath. And it also applied really nicely to this lovely smooth paper as well. I'm going to talk about this paper a lot I think. I've kind of kept it quite a restricted colour palette again on here and that seems to be something I'm doing a lot at the moment. However, I don't think I needed to use a lot, like every single colour going. Sometimes you can over flood an image by throwing every colour you can at it. I thought the hair could be a nice deep auburn, so I thought I'd get those highlights down first. And the yellow tones within that really work beautifully next to the purples and violets and the blues of the sky. I mixed the colour myself just using the red and the yellow to create this orangey colour and then to deepen that colour I used the purple and 
it's quite interesting really actually how much I use this purple for the shading as well I mean the colors that are going down now have been mixed with the purple but when I come back to it in a little while it was such a useful colour to use without having to use such a harsh black to add in those shadows. And it also adds a very nice atmosphere and tone to it as well. And I'll go into that in a little while when the robes of this character are being coloured in. Now, whilst I was designing this and drawing it and painting it, I kept thinking of what could this character to be? I do tend to find that stars tend to be a bit of a running theme here but it can't be the same character in each one really and it's quite interesting because how I did this character holding onto the cloth it, it's almost as if she's sort of getting it like you would with a net to try and capture something so I kept coming back to the idea of this character not just being a star based character but actually she catches stars so she is a star catcher and I quite like the ambitious look she's not catching falling stars she's catching them right up there in the sky where they should be and that's as far as I kind of got with this narrative in my head about it but it was quite fun imagining what she was what she'd do with all of these stars and does she keep them all inside this robe or does she have like a, a container for them where she lives or does she have a bag she puts them in you can tell i spent a long time over this and my imagination just kept wandering even further now we're up to a part here where i am just using purple it is slightly diluted but not too much and i thought that was such a beautiful way of adding the hair detailing in as well as the tonal variations and if you're kind of new to this whole painting thing whether it be watercolor or acrylic or whatever may i recommend perhaps using a different color maybe a contrasting color to do the shading rather than using a gray i don't know why but adding this colour and I suppose because of the yellow tones in there it was a contrast it just really added a luminance to it it's almost like adding that shadow in there made everything glow and I really quite liked it I did take a bit of a gamble with it to be honest because I wasn't sure if it would work as well with acrylic inks but oh my goodness yes the glow on this I don't know you can tell I'm quite pleased with myself on that Obviously the red tones on her skin also add warmth to it but the yellow tones everywhere else just I don't know it just did it for me on this one so I, I feel like I've made a nice picture here but I've also got a lot to take away from it as well. I added quite a flat layer of the yellow and again it was just the neat yellow for her robes, her hood her cowl whatever it is that she's wearing and using to catch stars with they are one and the same but just by adding that simple color and then just going over it again with the same color before adding those purple shadows really brought out some depth in here i quite liked how quickly these dried as well compared to watercolors and maybe that also has something to do with the paper but it meant I could add some nice layers to these shadows and detailed areas that I'm doing. And I know that some of it actually does look purple and it doesn't sort of merge into it. But again, I am not hating that. I quite liked that. It sort of added a nice ethereal effect to it. Do any of you guys have a go-to colour that you use for adding shadows? Or do you use greys or neat blacks i mean there's nothing wrong with it but like i've mentioned before if you just want to add a little something extra to it it it's it works it works beautifully and also have you used just a heavy weight cartridge thick cartridge paper as well to paint on and what were your experiences with that did you do a full-on painting with it or was it just like a quick wash and left it at that i'm just curious to know what your experiences are because i do have mixed experiences with these papers i don't think i'd use it for watercolors if i was going to really work into something but for a quick casual 
wash of ink or well wash of paint over it I think it'd be okay I don't feel like any vibrancy was lost on here either and again because it was a smooth surface I, I don't feel like the image itself suffered through any bleeding or anything none of that happened I was very surprised the only thing that I would say is obviously putting a wet medium on there it's going to make your paper warp ever so slightly so really make sure it's taped down well as you can see on the left hand side I did have a rather inconvenient lump in the paper but that's it's okay I, I'm okay with that that's nothing that wedging it between a few heavy books won't fix so we're just kind of getting to the finishing touches here and I must admit it didn't take away any of the line work I'd done using this ink they are quite transparent to a certain degree I'd say if any of them had an opacity to them it would be that yellow one but I have talked about these before in a couple of other videos I did however feel that some of the line work was lost due to the colour choices I'd made especially on the dark areas and that's nothing that going over it with a liner pen again just to bring out some of those key lines and bring back some of the form and definition that I thought was perhaps lost I also decided to dig out a paint marker and that is one of the Pintor Pilot paint markers that I received in a very old scroll box recently I know that's an oxymoron there's a video on that too but I thought the nib and the paint strength in there was just perfect to add some of those highlight details where I probably was a bit a bit haphazard with the paint but again though it had a nice opacity to it but not too opaque where those colours underneath didn't come through which is what I wanted I didn't want to lose all of that beautiful luminance that is the word of the day luminance anyway you fabulous lot I do hope you've enjoyed this video I've shared with you of course if you're new here please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any other videos I create and thank you all so very much for watching I do appreciate it if you've made it this far anyway I will see you all on the next video and if you're still here leave a star in the comments bye